Good morning, everyone. This is Jordan, and I have a pretty big update. It's regarding Bitcoin. Now, I was following, and I'm still following, this very specific structure to the upside, and namely, whatever is happening after this moment. Okay, this is supposed to be an impulsive structure. And this impulsive structure, once completed, it's probably going to trigger the end of the bull run. Probably you all know by this time that once Bitcoin is finished, we're going to see some explosion in the altcoins. And after that, it's pretty much crypto winter, right? We're going into this kind of uh, market conditions for the next few years. So if you're still holding and you believe this is going to happen and you're not Bitcoin maximalist, uh, believing that we are going to 100 or 200 on this, bit, uh, not Bitcoin run, but basically bull run, right? Because I do believe this might be happening and we might be going to 100 or 200, but I think we're going to go through this um, drop once again before this happens. So why is this interesting? Some time ago, I posted a video. Actually, I think there were two videos that were going and coming to the end. And something very, very interesting is happening. This low is being now broken. My initial assumption since on this broker, the actual low, if I zoom in here a bit, you will see that the low is right here. It's not here, which for me meant the count should be started like this. If the count is started like this, then what we see is that we have a third wave here, right? And this third wave is now going for divergence. A weekly chart is going for divergence. So let's go to weekly and a false break, right? And this is a pretty massive rejection here. So my initial assumption, as you can see in the previous video, was that we are still looking at another push to the upside. And we're going to create something like this, going towards the 70 to 74, 5K approximately. We actually did come pretty close to that. Uh, we came to approximately 69, 70K which is missing just a few thousand dollars, which for Bitcoin is not that much, of course. But overall, the target was not reached. And not just the target in terms of the numbers. Uh, the more important part here is the structure was not completed. Okay, At least the way I see it, the final structure here was not completed. And we had very similar situations uh, like this one in the yen pairs, if you're also trading FX. So... The question is, what do you do now? And the answer is very simple. You have multiple options. Option number one is you take it and accept it as a fact and you deal with this thing conservatively, meaning if this is indeed a convergence, which in my opinion is, especially once the uh, current candle closes at the end of the day and we see where this will be closing, whether is going to be a massive spike here and close somewhere around here, which means we're probably going to be rejecting it, something like that, but at the bottom. Then chances are we're going for a zigzag and we're still going for another push up. Okay, this is a very, very interesting scenario. Tricky scenario, but still possible. Another option, since there are no divergences, and this is the scary part, okay? I would be looking for a divergence right here if scenario number one was going to be happening. There is divergence only on the histogram, nowhere else, which is still acceptable since this could be um, since we're in this uh, corrective structure, not having divergence right here is still acceptable. This is what I'm trying to say. I need more coffee, obviously, just one second. And that's pretty much what we say about scenario number one, right? False breaks, top, bottom, we continue higher. But first of all, 
we're going for a range, we're going for a painful period, and then we go off. Okay, let's call this scenario number one, so we, we kind of keep it organized. Scenario number two, convergence. Okay, the convergence at that moment based on the price action and the indicators also looks logical. However, in this case, uh, since I still have some Bitcoins, what I am going to look for is if and how the price is going to perform around these levels. The next one, two, three candles are going to be very, very critical for me. They are going to suggest what's going to happen next. And if we manage to hold below and the price then goes for a tiny pullback, we come to approximately 50% of this pullback right, correction. And then we start for the um, with the breakout to the downside. My assumption will be that we're probably going lower and we're probably at the end of the run and we're not going to see another push up uh, regardless of all the price action regardless of this not being finished now this is the bearish scenario of course and i'm going to look for an exit once this bearish setup is triggered right now let's talk about other facts that we can see here <clears throat> Since I do rely on price action mainly, and this is always coming first and indicators are coming second and everything else is pretty much coming second after the price action, I am relying strongly on PA, which means I need to take a look at what's happening in these two last waves. Now, first of all, this is anti uh, end of the bullish run, let's say, okay, arguments against that. First of all, first argument is this structure is not completed. Second argument is the way this structure started developing to the downside is not impulsive, right? Or at least it doesn't bear all, uh, all the factors an impulsive wave should be bearing. What do I mean? Well, look at this. We start with a double wave and then we're continuing with double waves. And this kind of looks like zigzag here okay uh when the impulse is coming usually you want to see five waves clear five wave structures there are situations where we might be looking at double waves only but i would prefer and i do believe that this is much more important now on the other hand we know that the crypto is not always following precisely the rules of the Elliott waves in this specific case, we only have one wave uh, consolidation and then it blew up, right? So it's not always 100%. Sometimes we see that wave number, uh, wave number four is going and crossing wave number, uh, sorry, three, four, yeah, right here, right? And we have these kind of invalidations of the rules and this is why I have learned that when it comes to crypto, especially to BTC, studying the charts uh, purely from technical perspective, it's not always 100% reliable. I don't know if this is happening on purpose, someone is doing it on purpose, or this is just how this market works with the big volatility it involves. No clue, right? But I know the rules are not being followed as precisely as you can see that happening in commodities or effects, for example. Again, I don't know. Um, but I do understand that I should be looking at multiple factors and then I should be making my own conclusions. Usually what I do is I have a list with pros and cons regarding bullishness and bearishness. And then I put check marks, okay? And then I count it. And the more you have on either side, it means you're probably going to be moving in this specific direction. In other words, what we're looking at uh, for Bitcoin at the moment is signaling a lot of warning signs given that daily convergence which is happening. But given again the nature of Bitcoin and the way this thing is moving with plenty of volatility, violating the rules of waves, etc., I'm not going to cut my exposure yet. Plus, 
the logical thing that should be happening, even if this is going to be the end of it, is to see a pullback first. So why not wait and take another 5K, 3, 4, 5K, right, during this pullback and uh, close the positions right here, okay? Emotions aside, we got to be following rules. And yes, there are many times when Bitcoin doesn't give pullback and you're just waiting and pulling your hair and you're wondering why you didn't get in, blah, 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 blah. That's all fine for a beginner investor or trader. When you come to the business part of trading, you must understand that there is a set of rules. You go ahead, you set these rules and you wait for them to happen. If it doesn't happen, you either um, miss the opportunity or you lose money, okay? So in this case, it will be losing the opportunity, missing it. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I anyways, first uh, initial target was around 60K for me, which is where probably it was this one. So this is a small portion. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't hurt me that bad. So following the rules very, very, very strictly. And again, the bearish scenario for me will be triggered. If we get a pullback and then further continuation lower, I will be exiting. If it turns out and it um, goes for a range, then patience will be required because we're likely going to see the actual projections levels above 70K. I want to show you one more thing, which is pretty cool. It's called Platform X. It's a software which basically gives you an output about the direction and the recommended action on specific time frame sets. So you have three modules here. You have the long term, the mid term, and the short term. And pretty much what we are looking at is these different time frames, combination of time frames. And the software is going to check them simultaneously and give you some sort of output depending on whatever it finds. So this is the cool part. If we take a look at the long term, we can see that we're still uh, in a strong bullish momentum. And the recommendation here is actually to look for buys, which is one of the scenarios which uh, manual trading and analysis confirms. Short term is neutral, okay? And if we take a look at the very short term, sorry, mid term is neutral. If we take a look at the very short term, we can see that it already switched to uh, possible sales here. So it really depends on which case is going to take place. And exactly in such moments, I like to go ahead and reconfirm my analysis with the software. Even here, we can see the different cycles uh, on this specific market are in different states and pointing to different directions. This is why I'm saying that the complexity of this setup might be a bit intimidating when you look at this video for the first time. But if you think about it, it's actually different layers and these layers are going and taking direction. And when it comes to the shorter term, term periods, it's already happening in one direction. When it comes to the longer term cycles, it's doing another thing. So we need to be very careful here. Uh, we need to be very patient. And let's see what the facts, where the facts will point us, okay? All right, guys, so that would be all. I know it's a bit uh, complex at that point. I understand that if you're not using my specific trading methods, this might look like jabberish. I really hope I managed to make it as clear as possible and distinguish the different scenarios that we might get here. And I'm throwing this video out there in purpose and I'm doing it in advance, I mean, on purpose because I want to give you something to think about, okay? I don't want to be, let's say the price goes here and then it starts pushing lower and then I record the video right here because then it will not get to as many people as possible in a timely manner, okay? And then you will be pressed by the FOMO. Should I be closing? Should I be selling? Should I be holding? You know, it's good when you have enough time to understand the actual logic behind this analysis if you have any questions to ask them, to discuss, and basically to form some kind of idea based on 
probably other people that you're following out there, your own analysis, and make a general conclusion what might be happening. So I hope this is going to be useful for those of you trading Bitcoin or holding Bitcoin. Uh, again, if you have any questions, drop a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Have a good day.